Welcome students. The first unit in this subject of building con materials, construction and planning. We are seeing about the materials. Okay. We have seen elaborately about the stones. We have seen elaborately about the manufacturing of bricks. We saw elaborately about the manufacturing of tiles. What are the materials that is used for making the bricks? Same materials that is most used for making of the uh, tiles. But the, uh, pro that is the... Uh, the size of the clay that is taken for tiles will be different to give a very smooth uh, finish and other things. Okay. And also we saw about some properties of the uh, bricks. But here in this uh, lecture we will see elaborately about the properties of the bricks, properties of the tiles and the types of tiles and, uh, uh, and aluminum. Right. Aluminum always will take aluminum in the next class. These two things we will see for this class. Okay. So this is the. Uh, all of us know, again I am reminding you what is a brick. A brick is a rectangular block of material that is formed due to the need clay, right? So it is formed due to the needed clay, bearing soils, sand and lime or concrete materials or fly ash along with the, co I mean fine aggregate water, it forms the bricks. Okay, so if I, all of us we have seen that this is a clay bricks, ordinary bricks, this is a uh, auto clay bricks, this is a, uh, this uh, uh, fire clay bricks and this we call it as the uh, fly ash bricks. Okay, these are the different types of bricks we have already saw. And these are the tests that usually we will be applying in the, uh, for the site and also we will be doing it in the lab. Right, so the water absorption test, the visual inspection test, efflorescence test, the dimension test, hardness test, soundness test and structure. Okay. So for finding out the water absorption, we will take the five bricks. Okay. Say we will take five bricks. This five bricks we will take and we will take the weight of these bricks. Okay. Dry weight of these bricks. And then we will be immersing in water for the 24 hours. For 24 hours we will immerse in water. After 24 hours we will take it out. We will surface dry it and then we will weigh. Right. So the final average weight or the loss of weight we call it as the water absorption value, right? The loss of weight between the wet weight and the dry weight divided by the dry wet weight into 100, we call it as the water absorption value, right? Again, I am telling you, wet weight, okay, wet weight is we get it after the 24 hours of deep minus dry weight, okay, divided by wet weight into 100. That is the percentage into 100. So what is the percentage of the bricks we have already seen? You should not absorb more than 20 percentage of moisture. And this is the all that is 1107 is the highest code that is used for determining the properties of the bricks. One, one of the main disadvantage of this is that the highest code is mainly focusing on the ordinary bricks that is the bricks made up of mud. That is the clay, not a fly ash, not a concrete or autoclave, concrete uh, clay blocks, uh, nothing it is following. It is only following ordinary bricks, which is very, very essential here, right? And the next one, it is the uh, visual inspection. So visual inspection, we should know any, either, any white color is there. If there is any white color, then we can see this is the due to the uh, formation of efflorescence, right? The sulfur formation, action of sulfur and water. The lime leaching out of lime. All these things uh, brings the white color into the top. So we should first see in the visual examination is that whether the brick is having a very uniform color. The bricks is off should be uniform in shape and uniform in color. Okay. So if mostly the bricks are of rectangular in shape. All of us know whether it is a dry ash bricks or it is a concrete bricks or a car, ordinary clay bricks, whatever it may be. It is of rectangular in nature. We have to see whether the edges are sharp edges. Okay. Whether the size is correct. All the bricks are of same size. Okay. So the size is correct. Like that we have to check whether we are going in for the uh, taking the bricks. As a civil engineer, when you are going to demold a uh, load of bricks in the site, you have to see this one. Okay. So the next one we have to see is the efflorescence. I told you efflorescence is a thing by which the leaching of lime are uh, due to the carbon calcium carbonate formation the due to the water and the carbon dioxide 
the presence in the water, I mean uh, clay, this uh, leaches out and it forms a white color. Okay, so how will you be conducting now? The bricks will be placed vertically in a dish 20 to 30 centimeter approximately in size with 2.5 centimeter and immersed in distilled water. Why we are taking distilled water for efflorescence means ordinary portable water has some organic materials and ordinary salt water will have some other materials. This material is adversely affects the efflorescence and we cannot get what is will be the property or what is the effect of efflorescence on the brick. So we are using the distilled water. Okay, the whole water shall be allowed to absorb by the bricks and then evaporated through it. Okay, so it will take time. We will make the uh, I mean bricks immersed in water so that all the water will be absorbed by the bricks. And we will be taking the bricks and keep it, in, keep it outside where all the water will evaporate. After the evaporation, after the brick is seen, that is the brick is dry, we will be seeing what are the uh, dots there. Okay, after the bricks appear there, a similar quantity of water is placed in the dish and the water to be evaporated as before. Same type of, uh, I mean, some amount of water will be kept and again the brick will be kept inside for, uh, and again observing the moisture. Again taking it and keeping it out for drying out. This cycle is passed and we will find out whether any deposition of salt is there due to this process. The cycle may be of 3 cycle or 5 cycle or only 2 cycles depends upon the bricks and we will be finding out how much the salt is uh, oozes out of the bricks and it is deposited on the surface. We can see the deposit of the salt. Okay, so there are 3 conditions. One, there is no perceptible deposition of salt on the surface, then we will say that this is all, this brick is a very good brick. If there is not more than 10 percentage of the area of the brick is affected or it is having a salt content, then we will be say, saying that the brick is slightly affected. The third one it is the heavy, that is around 50 percentage of the area is affected by this salt, then we will be saying that the uh, brick is moderately affected. And but the but the what happens is there will be some flaking of the surface. What is flaking means? If this is a brick now, the salt may be affected to 50 percentage around it, either the inner surface. Then there will be a layer like this. It will fall down either like this or like this. The layer will separate from the original parent material. We call it as a flaking. So this may happens. All of you know about cornflakes. Cornflakes is a thinner material that is of different different. Uh, the plates, right? Like that it will be there. The next one it is the heavy, where the deposition is more than 50 percentage, then we go in for the, uh, that is a heavy, uh, I mean, uh, effect of the uh, efflorescence, that is the salt on the bricks, which we should not be very cautious when using in the building materials. And the very serious condition is that the entire bricks is of changing in color rather than the ordinary brick color, that is a brick brown color into the reddish color into wire, yellow or whitish color that brings we should not use it okay mostly this moderate that is um, brick will be used to that up to moderate efflorescence okay so with no efflorescence the bricks are very uh, uncommon and we are not able to get it but this efflorescence we are up to 50 percentage and that is up to moderate level is allowed for the building purpose the next one dimensional tolerance so dimensional tolerance, if I am going to take randomly a brick from a 1000 or 2000 bricks, there randomly the dimension should be the same. Okay, so that is the dimension tolerance. Either 10 of the bricks will be taken and it will be kept and it will be the dimension will be seen or it will be taken a ton of bricks, they will be randomly taking a 100 bricks and they will check. Okay, so actually the bricks plus of 3 minus percentage of the this uh, dimension tolerance is allowed, right, for the class 1. That is, like we told you class A, class B, class C, class D. So, for class A, that is a very good properties of the bricks, which is having a uh, compressive strength of 7 and above, 7 Newton per mm square and above. We will go for only plus or minus 3 percentage absorption of this moisture. And for other classes, we go for plus or minus 8 percentage absorption of that moisture. Okay, the next one it is the hardness. Hardness is uh, different from strength. Already I so, uh, told you I may be hard outside but I may be very soft inside. So that means my strength is very less, my hardness is very low. 
Someone person will be very soft outside, but they will be very strong inside. Okay, so that is a hardness, right? The outside scratch are the resistance to any plastic resistance. We call it as the hardness, right? So the brick should be having very, I mean, good hardness, and it should not leave any impression on the surface. That we call it as the, uh, I mean, hardness. The next one it is a soundness. Soundness means we take two bricks in each hand and we will uh, each other lightly, that is struck with each other, abrasion with each other, slightly, it should have a very good ringing sound. Then we will say that the brick is very sound and we are having very good strength. So now also I will see some of the, uh, then we have one more property is a structure, where we, uh, this is where we see that whether the dimension tolerance is there, and also any holes are there, any lumps are there, any pebbles are present in the surface or the bricks is of very good quality, uniform throughout. That is the structure of the clay material in the brick that we will see. So some other thing that we have to see when you are going as a civil engineer into the field, we should know how to stack a brick. Okay, so this type of stacking a brick is not permitted. Okay, why we are not permitting this type of bricks? The bricks one by one, one by one, it will collide with each other and the edges will break down. So if the edges are break down, the proper bondage will not be there in a brick wall. We have to go for more binding materials. The most important binding material is cement mortar or lime mortar. That is cement with the sand or lime with the sand and the cement. Nowadays we are using even fly ash, cement and sand. Okay, so that binding materials will be more than the cost of this brick wall will be more. So the main thing how to stack a brick is this way, right? If you are not stacking the brick like this, then the brick will be after sometimes if there is a rain or a feathering condition, everything, the brick will easily break and we cannot use it for the construction purpose. The next one it is this. I told you now the efflorescence. Okay, so the size of the bricks and also the shape of the bricks. And also the efflorescence, all these things are, sure. I mean, we can see, right? So this is one size, this is another size. Okay, so if this is size is there and if it is of a uniform color, I can go for this. Otherwise, if the size of the brick is like this and it is of uniform color throughout, I can go for it. But I can't go for both the bricks like this in a single term. That is one part. If this color it is okay, I can go for this brick. The next one, it is this one. There are so many white patches, right? I told you it is due to the formation of efflorescence, right? So this type of bricks should not be there. And here, I, the, uh, this is not clear because I want to show only the white color there. But the bricks, even though stacked there, it is not of uniform sizes. So the shape and size of the brick uh, should be very perfect when we go in for the construction. The next one, this test, we cannot do it in the site. It is a compressive strength test. I told you. Class A, Class B and Class C. Class C bricks will be uh, having a compressive strength less than 3.5. Okay, it will have a less than 3.5 Newton per mm square. But a modern brick or a Class B bricks, it will have a strength 3.5 Newton per mm square to 7 Newton per mm square. A good quality bricks will have more than 7, even up to 14 Newton per mm square the brick can have. This is a classification according to the IS code, that is Indian Standard Code 1107. Okay, so this property of finding the compressive strength, we have to do this with the compressive testing machine in the lab. You must have seen this compression testing machine in the SM lab. This semester you are having the strength of materials lab now. And the thing you will be doing this brick test also there. Okay, so find out the compressive strength. What, why we are worrying only about the compressive strength? What is the need of not worrying about the tensile strength? Means the brick concrete, they are very good in compression, very weak in tension. That's why we are going for RCC, reinforcement into the concrete to increase its tensile strength. Okay, so the next one it is that the strong the brick should not break when dropped from 1 meter height. So when you are dropping the brick from 1 meter height, it should not break. Right, this is test already I have told you. And one more thing what I want to tell you here it is, even the brick now we are stacking with each other, it should be a clear ringing sound. Even the compressive strength we cannot go and we cannot find out always in the lab. Instead we can take a brick and I can cap it like this, then it should have a very good clear ringing sound. Then I can say that the brick is very good. 
This is a test that I told you now, the water absorption should not be more than 20 percentage. This is a test that can be conducted in the site. Okay, so 20 percentage less water has to be done. This is a test for the efflorescence where a particular uh, depth of water will be there in which bricks will be immersed, taken, dried out and again even the same amount of water will be kept, it will be allowed to absorb, then it will be taken and uh, it will be dried out. Okay, so the amount of salt or amount of white patches on the surface of the brick will determine how much the efflorescence it is affected. Okay, so uh, we already saw this one, only thing I want to tell you here it is that moderate efflorescence level is mostly permitted for the uh, I mean uh, brick construction. The next one it is the advantages of the bricks. So mainly the why we have going for a bricks in the uh, I mean construction field is that one thing it is strong and durable. Right? It is very durable, it is very strong and the second one it is having a low maintenance work. Right? So the brick pole is having a low maintenance. The next one it is the thermal for performance. Okay. So the thermal effect of the bricks that is a fire effect, uh, effective of the bricks will be very less. Also the heat, right? So it will be it will not allow the heat from outside to come inside and also the warmth of the inside room cannot be uh, conducted to the outside that we call it as the thermal performance. And the next one it is a design flexibility. Okay. So it is not necessary that as I already told you now, if it is a column or a beam that if you are going to place a column, you cannot change the column size and shape, right? But if I want to have a small uh, I mean a uh, brick wall here as a partition wall and make a room in the first floor I can do it without even a ball, right? So without even a column, right? So like that I can have a flexibility in the uh, uh, making a wall and also there is one more flexibility. Either I can go for a stretcher ball or a header ball. What is a stretcher means? I already told you it is in a brick. This side we call it as a stretcher, right? This side we call it as a header. This side we call it as a header. If a row of bricks is made up of stretcher alone, we call it as a stretcher board. If the row of brick is made up of only header bricks, then we call it as a header board. So whichever want, right? So actually this we call it as a stretcher, right? So here we call it as a header. So whichever the board we needed, we can go for it. Alternative of stretcher and in, I mean uh, header bond can also be done, which is called as English bond or Flemish bond. We will be seeing in detail about this in the brick masonry, right? The next unit or next unit will be coming classes, we will be seeing in detail in the brick masonry. The next one I told you the fire resistance. Even though much fire is there and throughout this building is so much affected like this in the black color also, the life will be saved, okay? And also the same bricks can be used for the recycling purpose and it can be used for the reclamation of the land, used for the retaining walls and other things. So these are the advantages of why we are using the bricks. This is the demerits of the bricks. Okay. So the clay construction that will lead to extensive loss of fertile top soil. So all we are taking for the bricks the soil now. The good soil we are taking it for making the bricks. So the cultivable land, the top surface which is having so much of nutrients will get lost. Okay. So that the crop agriculture will be affected. Okay, and it is having a devastating environmental hazard. A very good name they have given. Devastating environmental hazard will be happening due to the removal of clay that is used for baking the brick. The next one, high demand for clay brick would result in price hike of clay bricks. Okay, so nowadays everywhere we are going for construction, everywhere we need bricks. So what happens, the brick price will be raised enormously. And it will differ from place to place. For example, ordinary bricks in some places it is 3 rupees, some places it is 6 rupees. If I am going for a fly ash brick, even fly ash is a, that is a waste material that is coming from the thermal power plant. The fly ash bricks cost around 4.5 rupees to 8 rupees. If I am going for a hollow, hollow block bricks, it is going from 13 rupees to 25 rupees. Auto clay concrete bricks will cost around 25 rupees. Okay, so the cost of the bricks differs from place to place and also the uh, different bricks having different rates. Okay, so the next one it is the burnt clay bricks that is mostly using outdated technology, right? Okay, the, the two, three types of, uh, I mean molding that is uh, drying process and burning process we saw, right? Nowadays we are going in only for the clean burning, 
we are not going in for this type of burning where so much of pollution is caused so much of i mean time is wasted and other things okay and also we will be getting the very good quality of bricks the quality of bricks that is coming out of this will be very inferior and nowadays they are using it for the fly ash bricks the fly ash bricks clean program hydraulic machine bricks from these machines are tested for its quality and durability and we can use this fly ash bricks instead of ordinary bricks okay the next one it is the tiles we are going to see some tiles and some uh, uh, different uh, types of tiles okay so this we have uh, used the so what are the characteristics of tiles the tiles should have a uniform color they should be properly burnt it should be free from cracks flaws and bends and then it should be hard and durable it should have proper shape and size it should be even and compact structure it should give a clear ringing sound that of a bricks why i have taken this and that is a, a smaller size of the brick we call it, call it as a tiles okay chota uh, brick okay right okay the same thing uniform color properly burnt free from cracks and flaws bends hard and durable proper shape and size even in compact structure and clear ringing sound the same characteristics we can use it for the bricks okay so now we will go for the types of bricks the types of tiles one is clay floor tiles which is used for the flooring the next one wall tiles will be there like this we are used for walls and roofing tiles where roof uh, roofs for you and somewhere in the drain sala we can use this tile for the passage of water okay one by one we will see this clay floor tiles as a name signifies it is used for the flooring purpose and the clay tiles are used to, for the flooring purpose we can get it in the different sizes okay we will get it in the different sizes now uh, but in the uh, market we can't go and tell i want this centimeter of tiles okay there you will be having the 1 inch right so different sizes is 1 inch tile okay 1 inch square tiles 2 inch square tiles 3 inch square, that is 4 inch square tile not 3 inch is there 4 inch square tiles that they are taking mostly 2 inches and 4 inches are there 4 inches will be built very big girl and it will have a very good aesthetic and 1 inches will be very uh, cheaper and also it will be very good it can be easily packed easily placed okay so these tiles are flat in shape rectangular square or other geometrical outline they come in different dimensions here you can see the two types of uh, or two right different shapes we can go for it or uh, different uh, uh, dimensions we can go either it is a square or it can be even you can have go for a rectangular tiles so this is a hexagonal tiles okay so the next one it is what is the main thing advantage that is the quality of the floor tiles is that it is hard to resist wear strong to resist load it is well burnt give a good ringing sound and no visible foreign materials pebbles grit lime or other fragments or surface or sides dimension specifications is the tolerance of plus or minus 3 and plus or minus 1.5 mm okay the next one we will see about the roofing tiles all of you must have seen about the roofing tiles they are used as an alternative to corrugated and plain galvanized steel and also asbestos sheet uh, the asbestos sheet if you are going to live under an asbestos sheet for 20 years you will get cancer so now i guess all these things are uh, either they will be transformed to a iron or to a uh, tiles but what is the main advantage of the tiles is that it is very temperature comfort right iron will allow the uh, heat from outside to come into the room but uh, this tiles will prevent okay we can have this interlocking type of tiles or we can go in for this type of tile what is the main advantage is that it is absolutely a leak proof very durable easy to fix on the roof and it is having a less maintenance cost okay so the next one it is the what are the different types of roofing tiles we will see pot tiles flat tiles allahabad tiles mango tiles and corrugated tiles we will go in details and also very fast okay this is a very ordinary type of pot tiles okay because of this nature of this things we call it as a pot tiles it is very well that is most common in kerala where the rainy the rainy places where the rains are very high okay so the individual tile is mostly a semi circular and tapering diameter 15 cm at one end and it will be having a 10 cm at the other end and easily it will allow the water to flow through right so it is also called as the pan tiles 
Okay, it can be easily made and it will be the first tiles that was ever made is the pot tiles that is used for the roof. Mostly it is used in the rural areas. The next one it is a flat tiles. The flat tiles is the, having an IS score as IS 2690 part 2 1975. You can see this type of files. Okay, it can be a rectangular shape or it can be a rectangular, I mean so there is a square shape. But it can be stacked at the different sizes and different levels in different positions by which the uh, this water can be allowed to flow through okay so it will have a compressive strength of 7.5 newton per mm square and by a maximum water absorption of 20 percentage and all the types will have the same thing because it is all made up of that is most of the thing is made from clay and having the same almost uh, properties like that of the bricks okay the next flat types they are used in the combination with pot types in roofing and common buildings. The next one it is called an Allahabad tiles because it is uh, mostly used in the Allahabad area. Here it is of a flat tile only but it will have a uh, flat tile and then a pot tile. Flat tile and it will have a different pot tiles. It is a combination of a flat tile and a pot tile which is uh, used mostly in that area. Right? It is good in pre uh, pre prevention of the heat from the sun. The mangrove tiles which is used in the southern part of the India these tiles that is uh, used because it is mostly used in the mangrove and southern parts, we are using it as mangrove tiles. The important feature is the interlocking arrangement. Okay, you can see this. So the next tile will be placed like this. So it will be, this tile will have interlocking here. So like that the tiles when they are placing one tile will be interlocked. So the strength, the tension strength will also be there and the tiles will be very good, behaving very good. So what is this important characteristics? It can be free from twist, bends, laminations, cracks, blisters, etc. Right? So the dimensions will be of different dimensions is uh, 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 allowed and also the, the weight of the tiles will, should not be more than 2 kgs or 3 kgs. And the moisture absorption should be less than 10 percentage and the, uh, I mean mostly it should be less than 24, 20 percentage and the breaking load differs from 10 point uh, 2 Newton per mm square and 6.8 Newton per mm square. Next we are going for a corrugated tiles. You can see this corrugated tiles also in the areas. Nowadays these are steels are also made of this corrugated tiles, the shapes. Okay. So it is mainly used in the uh, industrial sheds. Right. Small, small industrial sheds we are using. And we are using here to resemble the galvanized iron sheets, GI sheets. Okay. The next one it is a clay drain tiles. Till now we saw about the roof tiles, now we are going for a drain tiles. All of you have seen the drain tiles like this, that is mostly used. What is the main thing is that it uh, allows the water to flow freely, it is less maintenance and it does not uh, hold the water for a long time and mainly used to be in irrigation drains and also in the domestic drains. Okay, so for the flow of water. So we, today we have seen about the bricks and the Application of bricks, the properties of the bricks, how we have to, I mean, uh, find the bricks, uh, properties of the bricks in the site. And next we have seen about the, uh, this uh, tiles, what are the different types of style, what is the characteristics of tiles, what is the application of tiles. Okay, so the next class we will be seeing about the aluminium and glass. Okay, once again I am telling you, in this class we have seen about, so till now. In this subject, what we have seen is the stones, okay, the properties of the stones, the classification of the stones, okay, the uh, coring of stones, blasting of stones and pressing of stones, okay. In the bricks, what we saw is that, we saw the bricks, okay, the good composition of the earth brick surface, the manufacturing of bricks in detail and what are the types of bricks and what is the type of bricks composition, okay. And the different sizes of bricks also we saw. Okay. So the next one it is the tiles we have seen. We have seen what is the manufacturing. Almost it is um, replicable of the bricks. So manufacturing of tiles. And what are the different methods in manufacturing. What are the different types of tiles we have seen. And we have seen about the. Uh, uh, in this class we have seen about the. Uh, the properties of bricks. And the classification of tiles. And properties of tiles. Okay. So in the coming class. We will see about the aluminium, glass and bitumen. Okay. Thank you.